Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm DJ Six Smith. Welcome to Sit Down. Welcome back. Ryan Michelle Bathe, brand new movie, Sylvia's Love. She's also got All Rise on CBS, her own production company. It's, it's a good time to be you. How are you? I'm great. <laughs> you it's, know, uh, I... <laughs> it's nice to be talking to you again. I feel like so much has changed in your life and all of our lives, but especially for you since last year. I mean, what has the past year been like for you? I Perfect. know, I know. It's been a crazy year for all of us. It's funny. I mean, I, sometimes I have a little bit of guilt that, there, you know, things are going sort of moving and grooving, um, given how crazy it's been, you know, I think we did the same thing as everybody else. You know, we shut down, we hunkered down, we live in, we live in, I even hate to say this in terms of blue state versus red state, but we live in a blue state, mm -hmm. you know, so when that thing happened, honey, we went to Whole Foods and it's so <laughs> funny because, you know, in LA, like no one eats carbs. Right. right, like you just like you won't even. I know people who won't even eat bananas. Like <laughs> they're health nuts, and they're like, "Do you not know shut up?" Like a like a banana is like a Jolly Rancher out here. That's ridiculous, but baby. That that thing hit, and we went to the store. Or I went to the store because like everybody, and I went to Whole Foods. It was like a swarm of locusts had like attacked the pasta aisle, and I was like, "You don't even know how to boil the water to make the pasta. <laughs> what are you gonna do with the pasta?" But it was like anything perishable: potatoes, pasta, tomato sauce. There were signs everywhere. You can only have one stick of butter. Yep. You can only have one thing of milk. We will get more in. Stop tripping, y'all are like signs. Like, why are you crazy? <laughs> get out of it. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, you know, and, and, you know, it really pointed out, and I know this was not where we were supposed to go with this, but it just pointed out how privileged we've been up until this point mm -hmm. that we never think about the grocery store unless we're like, oh my God, I have to go to Trader Joe's and Whole Foods. Cause it's like, I have to get the Trader, you know, and you're just like, we have such privilege, so many of us. And it just really made me kind of sit down and think about there are people in this country pre-pandemic Mm -hmm. who's that that's their everyday experience is a, a, a scarcity around food and 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 just day-to-day -day things that we all take for granted so you know I, I hope it's made me more compassionate or just you know realize that like it really just takes one thing that's out of your control and your whole life can spiral yeah scarcity around food is such a big issue I think we've really taken that seriously and I think all of the people who are unemployed this year have really just been you know, aware of what's been going on with our economy that's been happening for a long time. And here we are, and we have to face it. And even everything that happened with racial injustice too, like we were just presented with all this stuff and we had to have a reckoning with all of it. And it was messy at times, but completely necessary in a lot of different ways. Completely, completely necessary. And just on a, like you said, a global, a, a, a national, and I think individual reckoning with, with, with privilege, you know, mm -hmm. that we all have in some way. And, you know, I do understand how people fight against that because there's this sense of like, you know, nobody ever gave me nothing. See, right. you know, I did it all myself. See, you know, <laughs> like everybody kind of has that idea. Like, you know, every, this sort of like bootstrap slash Babe Ruth slash, you know, guy with the Tommy gun, right? Like we have this like, yep. this like national idea of ourselves. It's like, I did it all myself, see, you know? And it's like, sometimes you have to realize that not, that's not, that's not necessarily the case. And we, we're, we really truly are in this together. So I just share that to say that like, you know, we are all in this together. It was difficult for me at times, the homeschooling of it all or the social distance learning, whatever you want to call it. I call it torture. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, you know, and again, it was like, oh, I, again, had a great deal of privilege around my son's education because, you know, he just kind of goes to school and I do our parent teacher conference and it's great. And I was like, I'm faced with a child who's having a very difficult time learning in what is now the normal structure. You know, and I'm like, wow, again, another level of privilege where I've been able to just kind of go about my day. Like you said, yeah, sure. I can go here. I can go there because mm -hmm. I know my kids like straight and you know my kid hasn't necessarily been straight he's been struggling and i'm and while other kids are flourishing with this social distance learning he's not he's definitely not flourishing so yeah i mean th there's so much to think about and there's really so much to work on like you said individually in your family in your professional career and it really ties together with all the things you're involved with right now because one of the big things we've been thinking about is what are we going to put on TV? What kind of movies are we going to make? What are we going to invest in? And mm -hmm. Sylvie's Love seems like a really big example of that, where it's this, it's this beautiful story, where it's all of these great actors together, but they have the platform to tell this story in a really powerful way. So what was it like to be a part of this movie with such a great cast? Um, 
a great segue, by the way. <laughs> that tip to you for keeping me on track. Um, no, you know, it's funny because a lot of times people, um, I've been in this business for, you know, a minute. And uh, one of the things they always say behind the scenes, and we're all family here, right? I can say this, um, is, oh, well, uh, you know, stop you right there. A period piece, Black people, no. Unless it's Selma, no. You know, and you're just like, but we never get to see those moments in time when yes there was a civil rights movement going on or with these 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 major upheavals but you know there's for us as black people you know for me particularly thinking about you know what my mother and grandmother and you know have, have told me you know people also just lived they still had to get up and go to work every day they still had to get up and find ways and that's what's so beautiful about about humanity, right? We always find a way to thrive, or we will always find a way to, to, to have a little bit of joy or a lot of joy, you know? And, you know, you see these pictures of your, 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 it was always around Easter. I love looking at old pictures of my family from Easter because they showed out, you know, like with the clothes and the hats and the gloves and all the kids and every, you know, and, and, and that was so much of a, a joy of, of ours and our family. And to just see a very small snapshot of this woman and all the people that she meets and the journey that she has. And yes, it's a period piece. And I'm so excited that it gets to come out and people get to see, yeah, you can do a period piece with people of color and it's gonna do great because it's a specific and wonderful story and wonderfully told and wonderfully drawn. And, you know, we, I had a, I, I just, I had a great time. You know, you, you think about people before you meet them like a Tessa or a Namdi and you think they can't be that great. But they're that great. <laughs> <laughs> they really are that great. So <laughs> that's really awesome to hear. And and like you said, just humanizing the black experience is huge because for so long it's just been like, well, it's the civil rights movement and that's what we're gonna put on, or it's the struggle of black culture. And no, it's actually this person's a musician, this person's a television producer. Everybody's getting up and going to work. How important was it just to regularize and humanize black experience, especially in a period piece like this? extremely important. I have always said that the, the, the specific, the more specific you can get in telling a story, the more universal that story then becomes, you know? I mean, it's like Harry Potter, right? If we can all, and, and, and so much of it's because it's like she, the galleons and butterbeer and like all of the little details that are so specific. And, and we, as I know that I'll just say for me as an African-American, as a black woman artist, from the time I was small, I have always wanted to be able to participate in that level of specificity. But it has always felt like those doors have been closed mm -hmm. because when we are telling a story, it feels like so many people put on us what that story should be and it waters down that specificity. You know, it's a general, you know, struggle. It's a general what it was. It's a general whatever it is. It, it feels very general and that we don't get that opportunity to just tell these very specific and beautiful detailed stories so I just for me it was so I it was like a, a balm to my soul in a way to be a part of something that I've always known we could we could do mm -hmm. you know it's like Eve's Bayou there was a whole movie when I was like I think in middle school it came out called Eve's Bayou and it was similar to that in the sense that it was just beautifully drawn and beautifully beautifully um, um, told and it was also very specific and and I've always been of the mindset my sort of you know rose colored glasses self has always been of the mindset that if if people could see more of these stories then 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 that would in some way begin to bridge a divide that would in some way begin to to allow people to to, to see themselves you know in in us and then then that's how you, you know we share humanity Right. No question. Like about English paper. Sorry about that. And I'm like, so my thesis is. <laughs> no, it, it's it's super important because you have the stories that haven't been told, and then you have the TV shows and the movies that have been on for such a long time that haven't had the representation that's needed. Right. So, like All Rise, for example, Simone Missick is an incredible actor, and she gets the opportunity to lead this show on CBS on network TV, and and she's been on the show before. I'm talking about seeing a billboard with her face and how amazing that is. And so for you, who values all of this so much, to see Simone doing her thing and to be a part of that, what has that experience meant to you? 
um, you are just coming through with the segues. <laughs> You're making it nice and easy. You're just flowing it with me right here. <laughs> You're incredible. Um, I, you know, it's funny. I remember the first time I saw the bus. Because in LA, they put them on the buses and like, you know, you and I, you know, I have a car and obviously I live in LA and it's, it's a SUV. So it sits pretty high up. Right. So you turn and there's like her face right in front of you, you know, or like driving by on a bus. And I was like, you know, I have waited so long to be able to participate in this moment. I love the fact that she gets to lead a show and it's like everyday excellence. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's there's this sense about it that, and, and it's not, you know, it's a big deal, obviously, but it, you know, it's not like everybody is talking about, oh, can Simone miss it? What's gonna happen if a black woman, you know, they're just like, oh, this great show. And and it happens to be this amazing black woman. And she's, she's fierce and she's talented and she's wonderful. I love the fact that there are other black women on the show because there has been a time when it's like, you know, there can be only one, mm -hmm. you know that, right? <laughs> like, you might have the show, but we will never have any other black women on this show with you. You don't have no friends. You ain't got no family. You don't have a cousin. Like, and the fact that they wrote in a character, my character um, and Simone's character, Lola and Rachel went to college together, right? Now that's my experience. My experience mm -hmm. is that the women that I went to college with or grad school with, I mean, they're my people, mm -hmm. right? They are my people. And to see a relationship like that, and I'm, I'm a Delta in real life and in the show, I, I'm a Delta. But to see all of that, like on screen, again, I don't want to, I don't want to sound so, again, like, like I've got a tummy gun. I never thought I'd see the day, kid. <laughs> but it kind of does feel like that because I was told some pretty awful things when I first started in this business. And you know, thank God I didn't take them truly to heart, but they did affect me. They mm -hmm. did, they did, they did land. And to see that I've, I, you know, that, 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 that turned out not to ultimately win the day is, and then to be a part of it, you know, for them to call me and be like, Hey, you want to play this Rachel Audubon? Uh, mm -hmm. Say less. <laughs> I'm already in the car, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I remember when we talked last year, you mentioned just all of the struggles and the challenges you went through with this industry because of all the things that were said. But one of the things that's different now is that you have your own production company and you're like, you know what, you can say that, but I'm going to, I'm going to grab the power here. I have the opportunity to influence the next generation. So how does the production company come into place? And then even the deal with MTV, you know, that that's amazing. So how does that all come together? It is amazing. And I will say it started with, my stylist, Mark Allen, who's a dear friend of mine, and he knew a woman named Melissa Massey. <laughs> I hope I can say all this. I don't really even know. <laughs> Melissa Massey uh, styled me or, or, or made my dresses for the first two or three Emmys that we went to. Listen to me, you know, we're first, the first two or three Emmys that we went to, but this is, this is what happened. And she being turned into a, a friend and being the friend that she is, I did a cabaret at a it's called Industry Jazz and Cafe Nightclub in Culver City on Washington. Now, let me tell you something. Like, that's not really the hot spot, right? <laughs> it's not like I did a cabaret at Craig's or, you know, but I did it for me. I did it because I was, you know, Sterling had, all this stuff had just happened with Sterling and I needed a way to process it. And art is, is, is my therapy, one of my therapies. And so I put pen to paper and I wrote this cabaret. It was called Fame. Um, and our relationship to fame, how we think about fame, how I think about fame and, and what happened with, you know, I, I don't know why I do this, Sterling Brown's fame. <laughs> um, and, you know, she, Melissa Massey drug, drug, dragged her husband. Uh, she didn't drug him. I hope she didn't drug him. Um, Justin and, you know, a couple years later, he finds himself in a position where he's looking for content because of everything that's happening in the world and because of, you know, the world has changed so much just in those past two years. Um, I think that cabaret was 2017, maybe. Mm -hmm. And he picked up the phone. And I honestly thought it was one of those, you know, when your parents pretend that it's Santa Claus or they pretend yep. that it's Easter Bunny. And you're like, okay, it's clearly a guy in a suit. So where is the real Easter Bunny and get him to me now? Right. Like, I I believe, you know, I believe in the Easter Bunny. I believe in Santa Claus, but I also knew the difference between a fat man at the mall and a guy in an Easter Bunny suit. <laughs> I was like, you're real. You're just hiding them from me. So I thought this was like the Easter Bunny in a suit kind of deal. You know, I was like, is this like, 
is this real? Is this like, for I'm real? Like, yeah. Oh, is this for real? And he's like, no, it's real. So it took me a minute to kind of get there, but but I have it. And, and, and again, I'm just really interested in the specific stories. I'm interested in those stories that, again, the world has opened up. So we don't have to tell such generic, um, basic tales of, of, of what other people think blackness is. Mm -hmm. It can truly be an exploration of, you know, just wonderful stories that come across my desk and underrepresented people, underrepresented stories, underrepresented, um, or, or, and I don't even like the term underrepresented, but just people who haven't been yet, who who heretofore have yet to be given a chance. You know, yeah, opportunity is everything, right? And for yeah. you to be in that position and, and even for your husband too, like I know we talked about this last time, but like you never expected your husband to be this famous, right? To be doing this type of stuff. But like you can influence culture, he can influence culture. Like I, I watched him in the West Wing special and it was fantastic to see him in that. So what does it mean that you and your husband can influence culture even just by being on screen and now also, you know, pulling the strings with what gets created? Well, I thought I would be the famous one. <laughs> it's like, I am going to be the one because I understand Matt cosmetic and he does it. Like I, when we honestly, when we graduated from grad school, we were not dating, but I remember thinking like, feeling so like proud of myself because mm -hmm. I got the discount at Mac and I was like, I'm going to like outshine everybody because I've got Mac. Girl, bye. You better put your ruby blue lipstick down and keep <laughs> moving. Um, but yeah, I, I, um, you know, it, it, it came out of, it feels like it came out of nowhere. It didn't, it's, it, it's surprising that we are in this position. I don't, sometimes I feel like I won't understand it until it's over or, mm -hmm. or, or until we're sort of like maybe 20 years from now, I can look back right now. It's still so like, it's like cooking still, you know, it's, it's like a, a gumbo that's still kind of like bubbling. And I still feel like we're all kind of like, you know, me and him are like, what's really happening? Oh my God, you know, and, and we're raising kids. So that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that takes our focus out of like, what does this mean? And what could this be and to like, we have to do that and finish it and tie a, put a bow on it because somebody just, you know, like last night, they just, the two of them, I have two kids, they insisted on taking a bath together. Now, I just want to let you know, there's more water out of the tub than there yep. is in the tub. I mean, and I was, and I, I don't think Naren a soap got on Naren a rag to Naren a bootie. Like, I just don't think any soap happened. I don't think any, like, I was just like, I really just hope that water is enough right mm -hmm. now. <laughs> That'd be nice, because, right? <laughs> I, I don't even know at this point, and they were just a mess, but they were having the time of their lives. And, you know, they do that to us, to Sterling and I, like, if they decide that they want to do something together, oh, then they're the best of friends. Oh, I love my brother. Oh, my brother. <laughs> but if they were in the backseat of a car and we're coming back from soccer, stop touching me. And Andrew put his finger on, you know what? Yep. <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to stand for a sec. There. You know, how do you tell your child? I, sometimes I say, you know what, Mama loves you, but I don't care. Yeah, I say that to exactly. them. I don't care. I don't care. I care about you. I don't care. But anyway, so when you have that going on, I think sometimes it becomes, it, it's just like, it's hard just to, to stop and, 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 and feel the gravitas of the moment, you know, because, because again, there's, there's booties in the tub. <laughs> <laughs> that's you. the most important thing right like that's this doesn't define you you have other stuff going on like you, you see the whole picture the <laughs> <laughs> not my booty not sterling's booty there's other booties in the tub <laughs> well ryan it's been great catching up with you i'm really happy for everything you got going on congratulations and we'll talk to you again down the road right let's let let's not let it be another like two years to you i know you can't promise but honestly i truly love our, our talking to you the first time we met i was like i adore him i believe we were charlie remember and charlie yep, was like that's right. okay that's great we gotta go we gotta go come on come on get in the car get in the car you know like I yeah we uh we'll have to do it again before a year let's make it before a year because god knows what's only going to happen in 2021 and i would like to i'd like to see you Definitely. Before the well, next thing happens. Happy holidays. Uh, <laughs> happy New Year as well. And uh, we'll talk soon, right, Ryan? You too. Absolutely. Be well, DJ. Thank you.